Hello and welcome. Welcome to this virtual service for Easter Day, coming to you from Bailden Methodist Church in West Yorkshire. Bailden is a town seven miles north of Bradford and on the edge of the lovely Yorkshire countryside. Our church has a congregation of between 100 and 130 who regularly meet for worship on a Sunday. And also we have our lively community centre, Wesley's, which is open Monday to Friday, and you will find a great welcome, great food and great fellowship there. Check us out on our website at bailedandmethodist.org or on Facebook. But you are welcome, whoever you are, wherever you are. Sitting in your gym jams, perhaps scoffing your way through your first Easter egg today. We welcome you as part of our family. And we'd love to know who you are and where you are. So drop us a line on Facebook and tell us a bit about yourselves. I'd like to thank at this stage our three uh, circuit ministers, the Reverends Nick, Christine and Phil, who in these distant, distanted times uh, are putting out uh, work that we can use to reflect, uh, to use for worship and to contemplate upon. We have symbols. We have just out of the picture a candle, the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, he tells us. We have a dove, a dove of peace, and we have an empty cross, an empty cross at Easter because death could not hold Jesus, and he rose from the death, rose from the dead, and was and returned to his Father in heaven. And I brought with me a stone, a piece of stone to remind us that when the disciples and friends arrived at the tomb to complete the burial process that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away, the risen Jesus was not held or limited by human effort. The risen Jesus is free and is in the presence of God the Father. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to share an acclamation for Easter Day. We're hopefully going to join in, thanks to Ashley, with a great, that great Easter hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and we shall be able to sing that, hopefully, with the uh, Brookwood Praise Choir. Brookwood Church is in uh, North, South Carolina, and uh, I, in desperation, emailed the church to see what we had to do about copyright and have the most lovely, welcoming and loving and encouraging email that came back from them. And so we can remember that as we worship on Easter Day, they too, at the other side of the Atlantic and along with churches around the world, are celebrating Easter and Jesus overcoming death. We shall reflect on scripture, we shall pray together, and we will bless each other. And so, our acclamation, today is the day, everything has changed, death's cave is empty, save for a linen cloth, as a calling card for love. Today is the day that life has won, and hopes are made whole, thank God. Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Now come on, we can do better than that, can't we? Even though we are all separated, after three, we will say, I will say the bidding, and then you will respond, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So are we ready? After three, one, two, three, Alleluia. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. We pray. Holy and risen Lord, we come to worship you on this special Easter day. We thank you for all that you have done for us. We lift our eyes to honour you. Living Lord Jesus, you have come, you have overcome death. Fill us with your joy and new life. Amen. And now this is the point where hopefully we share together with the Brookwood Praise Choir and sing our hearts out. Christ the Lord is risen today. <laughs>
This is perhaps the strangest Easter Sunday we've experienced in most of our lives. Not able to gather as God's people on its holiest of days. Not even, to, even having time to, to spend with family or with friends. Not able to visit Dale or Coast. Yet, even as restrictions bite, we affirm God's love in Christ Jesus and seek to help each other to hear the Easter message. We gather in spirit. We give thanks for families, for friends and technology that links us. And we release our memories and our imaginations to visit special places in God's wonderful world. And perhaps on this day, the most special place is a garden. Our reading from John's Gospel is set in a garden. We read from John chapter 20 verses 1 to 18. I'm reading from the message and it's entitled Resurrection. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, breathlessly panting, they, they, they took the master from the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciples left immediately for the tomb. They ran, neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter. Stopping to look in, he saw the piece of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen cloths lying there, and the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew from the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there dressed in white, one at the head and the other at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. As she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but didn't recognise him. Jesus spoke to her, Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking he was the gardener, said, Mister, if you took him, tell me where you put him so that I can care for him. And Jesus said, Mary. Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples, I saw the master. And she told them everything that he had said to her. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. It is challenging to realise that the first thought of the disciples on finding the empty tomb was that the precious body of their Lord had been taken away, removed to a place that they did not know. The reaction was one of loss upon loss. Not the expectation or the realisation of something wonderful. As we reflect on this strange Easter day, let us spend some moments lamenting those precious things that have been taken away by coronavirus and, and, the responses to, and our responses to it.
there is good biblical precedent for lament. God invites us to be honest about our griefs, losses, anxieties and frustrations. As we name them before God, with Mary we weep beside the tomb and we wait for God. Holy God, you receive our tears and our torment, our cries, our questions. Help us to name them, to own them, to acknowledge them and to give them to you. And even as we name these things, draw close to us and speak our name with love, as Jesus spoke Mary's name, and give us hope. Amen. Our second passage comes from Acts chapter 10 and we read from verse 34 to 43. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favourites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel, that through Jesus Christ everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere, among everyone. You know the story of what happened in Judea. It began in Galilee after John preached a total life change. Then Jesus arrived from Nazareth, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit, ready for action. He went through the country helping people and healing everyone who was beaten down by the devil. He was able to do all this because God was with him. And we saw it. We saw it all. Everything he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem where they killed him, hung him from a cross. But in three days God had him up again and alive and out where he could be seen. Not everyone saw him. He wasn't put on public display. Witnesses had been carefully hand-picked by God beforehand. Us, we were the ones there to eat and drink with him after he came back from the dead. He commissioned us to announce this in public, to bear solemn witness that he is in fact the one whom God destined as judge of the living and the dead. But we are not alone in this. Our witness, our witness that he is the means to forgiveness of sins is backed up by the witness of all the prophets. I'll read that last sentence again. Our witness that he is the means to forgiveness of sins is backed up by the witness of all the prophets. Peter's testimony, which includes, they killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He was not seen by all for as long as can be remembered, many people have been fascinated by questions of perception. Why some people are able to see things that other people cannot. Take a look at this picture here. It's very clearly of a woman. Now some people will see an old woman and some people will see a young woman, if you look at the picture, the young, the young woman is looking down that way and the old woman is looking out from the page, but they're both part of the same drawing. Why do some people see things that others cannot? Why, when faced with this particular image, one person sees an old woman and the, and the other a young lady? 
we perceive the same image differently. Eyes, brain, memory, experiences, imagination, some combination of these things lets us see a certain thing. Now, in Peter's testimony, there are some who see the witnesses, and therefore by implication, some who don't. And those who see as witnesses bear testimony to those who don't. And of those who don't see, some believe. As Jesus says to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet, yet have believed. Thomas, you remember, threw a hissy fit when he discovered that the disciples had met with the risen Jesus and he wasn't there and he stamped his foot and said, unless I see and unless I feel and unless I touch, I won't believe. And Jesus said that to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We, so many years after Jesus spoke to Thomas, and Peter bore testimony in Caesarea. We are amongst those, not in seeing, but in believing. And in that, and in that blessing, we receive God's grace. Once we believe, we can start to see things differently. That is one of the consequences of grace, is a changed perception. Grace is that unlimiting, unqualifying love that is poured out by God through Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit and is ours for free and in love. And we just don't we just don't deserve it. One of the consequences of grace is a changed perception. Because of Easter, cross and resurrection, because of Jesus dying and rising, we can look hopefully on situations that seem hopeless. We may be in a dark place now, isolated, anxious, afraid, but faith lets us see that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it ever. Remember? The light of the world. Faith lets us see that light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it ever. As we move to a time of prayer, let me share with you some words from an Easter hymn that was written, it's number 292 in Singing the Faith, and was written by Fred Pratt Green. Now anybody with a name like Fred Pratt Green ought to have a flat cap and a bag of whippets and be a member of the cast of Last of the Summer Line. But far from it, Fred Pratt Green was an amazing man, a man of huge talent, huge energy, um, a terrific business head on his shoulders, and if he had uh, ignored God's call which took him into the ministry, um, he would have made a terrific life uh, and a very wealthy life as a very, very successful businessman, continuing to work hard and tirelessly right into his 80s. And Fred Pratt Green writes some wonderful, simple poetry, some of which has been put to music into hymns, and this is one of his. Pratt Green writes, After darkness, light. After winter, Spring, after dying, life. Alleluia. Take his body down. Lay it in the tomb. Love has overcome. Alleluia. Turn away in grief. Turn away in faith. Celebrate his death. Alleluia. Come whatever may. God will have his way. Welcome Easter Day. Alleluia.
we pray together. Let us pray. God who said, let there be light, illuminate our way through days of darkness. Jesus who said, I am the light of the world, give us grace to see and courage to follow. Holy Spirit, who enabled Peter to bear witness, help us to live in hope and to serve in love. Amen. God of grace, we bring before you those who have no joy and no hope, those who see no future, no light at the end of the tunnel, those scarred by pain and sadness, those who grieve. God of grace and resurrection power, bring your joy and healing today. We pray for those yet to hear your good news, whether that is because they have never heard or because they are closed to the message and the possibility of what if. May we be Easter people, willing always to share the good news of hope, peace and freedom with all those that we meet, neighbours, friends and strangers, in person, online, by letter or by phone. God of grace, we pray for those recovering from disasters, earthquakes and hurricanes, famine, fire and flood, and those living with human conflict and poverty, for all whose darkness is very real. God of grace, we pray for those facing illness, isolation, insecurity, separation, bereavement, unemployment. We call this because of the virus and the measures to contain it. And we pray too for all those working so hard to help. God of grace, may all share in the joy and hope of your resurrection. Amen. And we pray with all God's people the prayer that Jesus taught us, as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Again, from Singing the Faith. I want to use selected words from the hymn 313, Thine be the glory. And we make this as a statement of faith. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou or death has won. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of Life. Life is naught without thee, aid us in our strife. And we bless one another those in our household and family, those with whom we might ordinarily be sharing a coffee after church, those we would normally be spending time with this weekend, those for whom we care, and those who care for us, as we share in this ancient blessing. And as last week, I will read a short phrase and then we will say it together uh, so that we can all share in the blessing. And so we say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us today. And remember, the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Ever. Thank you. And God bless. And a very happy Easter to you.